endless rows of corn swaying under the sun, cows grazing lazily in open pastures, and a red barn standing tall against blue skies. This is what most people picture when they think of a farm. But what about a dairy farm floating in the middle of a harbor where cows never get seasick? Or vegetables grown 108 feet underground in London's abandoned bomb shelters? Farms powered by AI, shaped like mountain terraces, or teeming with billions of insects? These aren't science fiction fantasies. They're real farms operating right now. Today on Stellar Eureka, we're diving into 10 of the strangest, most bizarre farms on Earth, ones that sound impossible, but absolutely exist. Right in the middle of Rotterdam's bustling harbor, 35 cows live on a gently bobbing platform, producing over 200 gallons of milk a day without ever setting hoof on solid ground. At first glance, it might seem like a quirky eco-art project, but Rotterdam's floating dairy farm was born from a serious wake-up call, Hurricane Sandy. The storm revealed just how vulnerable coastal cities are when food supply chains break down. This floating farm is a bold response, designed to bring food production closer to the people, even in the middle of rising seas. The structure is divided into three tiers. Cows live on the upper deck, milk is processed on the middle level, and waste is treated below the waterline. But what truly sets it apart is its circular economy model. The cows are fed on brewery waste and potato peels collected from local sports fields, turning urban leftovers in fresh milk. Solar-powered desalination forms harbor water into drinking water, and the milk is sold just 100 feet away, directly to restaurants and markets. And if you're wondering, no, the cows don't get seasick. In fact, Veterinary studies show they're less stressed than their land-based counterparts, possibly thanks to the gentle rocking motion. The farm's success has inspired big plans, expanding to house 7,000 chickens producing 2 million eggs annually, all floating. It's not just a working farm, it's also a tourist destination, where visitors take boat tours to see this futuristic system in action and learn how cities can grow food in places we never imagined. While Rotterdam's cows float serenely on the surface, Norway has taken farming in the opposite direction, plunging into the deep. In the icy waters of Hardingerfjord sits Ada Fjordbrook's underwater salmon tower, a 236-foot deep closed pan system. If it were built on land, it would be one of Norway's tallest buildings. This submerged structure holds 200,000 Atlantic salmon and resembles an alien spacecraft resting beneath the surface, but beyond its appearance, it's solving problems that have haunted the salmon farming industry for decades. Traditional farms lose nearly 30% of their fish to sea lice, struggle with frequent escapes that damage wild populations, and face increasing environmental restrictions. This tower avoids all of that. Operating below the lice zone in a fully enclosed environment, it has zero escapes, zero parasites, and even converts fish waste into biogas that powers the entire facility. It functions like an aquatic elevator. As the salmon grow, they swim at different depths, while filtration systems pump 4 million gallons of water per hour to maintain ideal oxygen levels and remove waste. Feeding is precisely controlled, reducing food waste by 80% compared to open net systems. And by keeping farmed fish isolated from wild populations, it eliminates the risk of disease transmission, a major criticism of traditional aquaculture. From the depths of Norway's fjords to the bottom of the world, we arrive at a place where growing anything should be impossible. Just 1,300 feet from Germany's Neumeyer 3 station, the Eden ISS greenhouse stands in one of the harshest environments on Earth. Here, in Antarctica, temperatures plunge to minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit, winds can exceed 60 miles per hour, and the sun disappears entirely for four months. On paper, this shipping container-sized greenhouse shouldn't be able to grow a single seed, and yet it produces 595 pounds of food each year. Tomatoes, cucumbers, lettuce, herbs, and even strawberries 
thrive, thanks to space-grade aeroponic systems that mist plant roots with nutrients every five minutes. With no pests, no weather, and total control over light and temperature, plants actually grow faster here than in most places on Earth. But this is more than just food for scientists. Eden ISS is a testbed for future Mars missions. NASA researchers spend months in isolation using this greenhouse to simulate life support systems for deep space travel. The psychological benefits are just as crucial. Researchers report that harvesting fresh tomatoes in minus 40 degree conditions feels like performing magic, providing a vital connection to life and growth in an environment where nothing else survives. If Antarctica represents farming at the frozen edge of possibility, Israel's Negev Desert proves that agriculture can thrive where water barely exists. With less than two inches of annual rainfall and temperatures climbing above 104 degrees Fahrenheit, this region somehow produces 40% of Israel's total crop output. The secret lies in precision. Revolutionary drip irrigation delivers water directly to the roots, drop by drop, eliminating waste and maximizing e in one of the driest places on Earth. The results are staggering. Farmers in the Negrev harvest up to 660,000 pounds of tomatoes per acre, compared to a global average of just 110,000. The cherry tomatoes here are not only abundant, but also two to three times sweeter than anywhere else. The desert also grows basil so flavorful that Italy, the basil capital of the world, imports it, and it doesn't stop at vegetables. Fish farms now operate in the middle of the dunes, using brackish groundwater to raise tilapia and bass where nothing but sand once stretched for miles. While desert farms squeeze every drop of water for crops, one facility in Canada is reinventing protein itself using something most people try to swat away. Aspire Food Group's Cricket Farm, located in London, Ontario, houses more than 4 billion crickets inside a 150,000 square foot facility. It uses AI-powered monitoring and robotic systems to run what is currently the world's largest automated cricket protein operation, producing 28.6 million pounds of protein every year. And this isn't some novelty. The economics are game-changing. Crickets convert feed into protein 12 times more efficiently than cattle requiring 2,000 times less water than beef and emit 80% fewer greenhouse gases. The primary market right now is pet food, where cricket protein has become a premium ingredient, selling for three to four times more than traditional protein thanks to its superior amino acid profile. But the biggest challenge isn't automation. It's managing billions of territorial cannibalistic insects. Crickets must be kept at just the right density temperature, and humidity. If conditions slip, they start eating each other alive. Aspire's AI constantly monitors behavior patterns, feeding cycles, and environmental data to prevent population crashes before they happen. Crickets are sorted by size and weight using automated systems, then processed with precision. The entire operation runs around the clock with robotic feeders dispensing exact portions of organic waste and agricultural byproducts to fuel a farm unlike any other. Sometimes disaster sparks innovation in the most unexpected ways. In the aftermath of Japan's 2011 tsunami, a former Sony semiconductor plant in Miyagi Prefecture was transformed into the Mirai Plant Factory, now considered the most efficient indoor farm in the world. Inside, 17,500 custom LED lights span across 15 tiers of growing racks, producing 10,000 heads of lettuce every day while using 99% water than traditional farming. The entire operation runs like a high-tech assembly line. The LED lights are fine-tuned to specific wavelengths that accelerate photosynthesis, allowing crops to grow two and a half times faster than they would outdoors. Food waste, typically 30 to 40 percent in conventional farming, is cut to just 3 percent. Located in an area once impacted by nuclear fallout, the facility proves that with the right tools, agriculture can thrive almost anywhere. 
By cutting energy consumption by 40% and boosting yields by 50%, setting a new global benchmark for urban agriculture. From Japan's precision agriculture to the Middle East's boldest ambitions, we arrive in one of the driest places on Earth, where the world's largest vertical farm is growing millions of pounds of fresh produce. Located near Al Maktoum International Airport in Dubai, Bustanica spans 330,000 square feet and produces over 2 million pounds of leafy greens each year. It does so using 95% less water than conventional farms in a desert that receives almost no rainfall. The scale is astonishing. Vegetables served on Emirates flights are grown just minutes away from the airport. The farm's output is equivalent to more than 900 acres of traditional farmland and it saves 66 million gallons of water annually. This high-tech oasis is a joint venture between Emirates Flight Catering and Crop One Holdings. It supplies ultra-fresh produce to more than 100 airlines operating out of Dubai, cutting supply chains from weeks to just hours. While Dubai's farms reach skyward, London's agricultural innovators have taken the opposite approach, venturing deep beneath the surface where history and technology meet. Growing Underground operates 100 feet below Clapham North Tube Station, inside tunnels that once sheltered 8,000 people during World War II air raids. Today, those same tunnels are lined with pink and purple LED lights, producing more than 220,000 pounds of microgreens and herbs each year. The harvest travels via the London Underground itself, arriving at city restaurants within hours. This 75-year-old shelter is now the world's first commercial subterranean farm. It delivers 390 times more yield per square foot than traditional outdoor agriculture. With a constant temperature of 61 degrees Fahrenheit, there's no need for heating, cooling, or pesticides. The farm grows more than 40 varieties of microgreens and herbs, including purple radish, wasabi leaves, fennel, and red amaranth. Each is harvested at peak nutrient density, containing up to 40 times more vitamins and minerals than mature plants. Food from these tunnels reaches Michelin-starred kitchens like La Gavroche in as little as 4 to 8 hours. The operation also creates local jobs and new opportunities in a part of the city with limited access to farmland. As Chef Michel Roux Jr. puts it, the produce is mind-blowingly good with a consistency that only a controlled environment can produce. Back above ground in Tokyo, one company has redefined what a workplace can be. Inside the headquarters of Pasona Group, farming isn't just decoration, it's built into the structure itself. Across 43,000 square feet and nine stories, more than 200 types of crops grow alongside office workers. Tomato vines hang above conference tables, Lemon trees divide workspaces, and where most lobbies have decorative fountains, this one features a fully functioning rice paddy. This is urban agriculture with a purpose. Japan relies on imports for 70% of its food, and Pasona's indoor farm is part of a push to change that. Everything grown on site is used in the building's cafeterias, which serve 2,400 meals a day to employees and visitors. Workers don't just eat the food, many participate in planting and harvesting as part of their daily routine. Some spend 30 minutes a day tending crops, a practice shown to reduce stress and build team cohesion. The benefits go far beyond food. The plants improve indoor air quality so effectively that the building uses 30% less air conditioning than comparable office spaces. Productivity has increased by 15% in areas near the growing zones. Sick leave has gone down. Employee satisfaction has gone up. Each floor focuses on different types of crops. The second floor grows herbs and leafy greens, and basement chambers produce root vegetables. Altogether, the system supplies about 20% of the building's total food needs without ever leaving the property. Our journey ends where Earth meets sky in one of the most ingenious uses of urban space ever created. Atop a university building in Bangkok, Thomasat University's rooftop farm stretches across 236,000 square feet. 
its cascading terraces are designed to mimic traditional Thai rice fields, forming a mountain-shaped farm high above the city. This living rooftop produces more than 40 edible species, including drought-resistant rice varieties. Altogether, it generates 135,000 rice meals every year, feeding students and faculty directly from above. The design blends sustainability with local tradition. The farm integrates 500,000 watt solar panels to power irrigation systems, while retaining more than 3 million gallons of water in built-in ponds. These features help manage Bangkok's extreme rainfall, allowing the rooftop to absorb water 20 times more efficiently than concrete. But it's not just about smart water management. The farm provides critical food security for 40,000 people on campus and helps reduce urban heat by cooling the building itself. What was once concrete rooftop space um, a self-sustaining ecosystem rooted in the past and growing toward the future. From floating dairies to underground microgreens, these farms aren't just unusual. They are redefining where and how food can be grown. Some challenge gravity. Others challenge climate itself, and all of them force us to rethink what a farm even is. Which one caught you off guard the most? Could you picture your city growing food on rooftops or under street? Let us know in the comments. If this dive into the 10 most bizarre farms made you see agriculture in a whole new light, give this video a like, subscribe, and share it with someone who still thinks farming belongs only in fields. This is Stella Eureka, signing off.